What is the purpose of news? How important are focus and perspective? And what effect does news have on us and our world? Hello, my name is Anastasia Hercules, and I'm the creator and executive producer of a new kind of news network. But before I tell you what we're about, let me talk about where corporate news is at and why we have created our network. This is the state of evening news viewership since the 1980s. Even before the breakout of social media, as you can see, viewership has plummeted, decreasing by almost half. Not surprised? Neither am I. I myself remember staying up late every night as a kid to watch the 10 o'clock news with my parents. I loved the news. It was as much a part of my daily routine back then as brushing my teeth. Now, I can't remember the last time watching the evening news was a part of my routine. So why did I stop watching? Well, I believe it's for the same reason many people stopped watching. Because I was tired of it. Tired of the hype, the negativity, tired of the slant, the angle, and the misinformation. Mark Twain once said, those who don't read the news are uninformed. Those that do are misinformed. So how has the news misinformed us? For years, it has been inadvertently and subconsciously sending us the message that the world is a horrible place filled with terrible, irrational people and violent crimes. Now, I don't want to say that corporate news has done this on purpose, that they've figured out human beings are often fascinated by violence and the macabre, and they've exploited this because they realize if they scare us and put us on high alert, they will catch our attention and will tune in, and their ratings and profits would increase. I would hate to think that this is the case. And if it is, I would like to take a moment to earnestly plead with corporate news media to stop, step back, and take stock of what you're doing. Don't you realize how much potential influence you have over people and our world? Respect this influence and be honorable with it. Use your position for good, not merely for your own personal profit. I know that competition, greed, and materialism are powerful forces in our world, but can't you see that these forces are waning? I have spent my life as a world history teacher, studying the patterns of human behavior. And I can tell you that using fear to control or influence people is short-lived and never works out in the long run because those people will turn against you. In fact, it seems that many already have. Perhaps the decline in news viewership is what happens when you play to the lowest common denominator of human treachery instead of appealing to the kinder, gentler angels of our nature. The constant focus on violence, crime, inequality, hatred, division, war, terrorism, and the like inadvertently praises the dregs and failures of society, drawing them to our attention and throwing them in our face every night at 10 o'clock. Do you think ISIS wins or loses when their atrocities are reported on? They want people to be scared and to live in terror. To give them attention helps them in their mission, does it not? Now, I'm not saying turn a blind Pollyanna eye and say that all is well in the world. Absolutely, we should know about these things. But they are the exception to the rule, not the standard of human behavior. But one wouldn't guess that by watching the news. The news has created a false perception of what the world is. It has given us what George Gerbner calls mean world syndrome, causing some of us to be afraid to even talk to strangers paranoid about locking our doors, and preparing for the possible Armageddon or hostile takeover. But this is unlikely, for the perception is not true. The truth is, the world has been, and is, getting better. For example, here are some statistics. Right now, there is less poverty, less war, and less violent crime than there has ever been. Just think about it. Less than 20 years ago, most homosexuals had to hide who they were for fear of reprisal. And as recent as 1998, a young man was brutally beaten, tied to a fence post, and left for dead for being gay. Now, gay marriage is legal. No matter what your personal moral beliefs might be, I would hope that you would see this as an improvement. Yet with all these positive things going on in the world, how has Mean World Syndrome developed? Because perspective matters. Take this time for instance. It represents the 10 that is going wrong. War, terrorism, violence, hate crimes, rape, murder, scandal, inequality, racism, poverty, bigotry, etc., etc. As we focus and zoom in on it, it grows bigger and bigger until it looks like that's all there is. 
The same is true with what has happened to the news. We are rewarding bad behavior with lots of attention. So why don't we use the power of the media to reward and draw attention to those people and circumstances that are good? Wouldn't that inspire more people to do good? At the very least, it might help change people's perspective of what's normal, acceptable human behavior. It would make it harder for people to rationalize their bad behavior with phrases like, well, that's just the world we live in. It might make it harder for people to resist positive change and innovation by spouting limiting mantras of negativity like, be realistic. What is real anyway? What we give attention to grows. What we ignore often fades away because attention works like the sunshine of praise and fertilizes whatever you focus on. And praise works far better than negative attention. For example, if you spend all your time spraying weed killer and forget to water the fruits, vegetables, and flowers, your garden will die along with your weeds. Sure, do something about the weeds, but spend most of your time nurturing what is good, not fighting what is bad. Motivating people by praise and reward instead of punishment and condemnation proves successful over and over again in human behavior. Look at children in the classroom who are praised for doing good instead of condemning the minority that are not. The whole classroom becomes inspired and the bad behavior diminishes. You, the positive behavior becomes an example for how to act. The same works in the workplace, in friendships, and in marriages. The list goes on and on. So let's readjust the perspective. After all, the news is supposed to be about keeping people informed of what is going on in the world. Let's apply this positive angle to the current news situation today. I believe that the decline in news viewership is actually a good thing. Decline in viewership doesn't mean that people don't want to be informed or that they don't care. It means people are sick of being misinformed. Most people, especially the younger generations, seem to have an intuitive sense of reality and are not easily swayed to buy into just any version of reality that's pitched to them. Instead of going along with this misrepresentation and perhaps even manipulation, people have chosen instead to stop watching the news altogether. But people need to be informed, informed with the proper perspective and balance of good and truth. And the truth is, the world is not a terrible place just because there are some bad things happening. Most people are good. Just because you have some people that are lagging behind on the scale of moral and social evolution does not mean that things are as bad as they are often portrayed. The news hasn't stopped terrorism, war, violence, hate crimes, racism, or inequality. In fact, it borders dangerously dangerously on propagating these things by making them seem larger and more prevalent than they actually are. They almost make them seem normal instead of the exception. How much power would we take from the terrorist if we refused to promote their fear and hatred for them? How many people would stop their bad behavior if they received no attention from it? Instead of dignifying bad behavior with a tirade of reactions, what if instead we chose to respond? What if we consciously chose to de-escalate the negative situations by only briefly mentioning them in the news, then giving them educated, well-informed, multiple perspective concerned, followed with action? Or, if the negative news is not even worth that much, give them a disdainful roll of the eyes and move our focus back to the 90% of what reality is. Good news. So let's really turn the other cheek to our enemies. Let's notice what's happening and say, um, that's not okay, why would you do that? And what can we do to stop this kind of behavior? Then turn our cheek to them, facing our focus and attention to the solutions, not just keep talking about the problem. Part of the solution to the world's problems is to stop honoring bad behavior by reporting on it and only it. In the 1960s, Mother Teresa was once asked why she wouldn't attend an anti-war rally. Her response? was that she wouldn't accept an invitation to an anti-war rally, but she would if in invited to attend a peace rally. Why? Because even anti-war rallies create more violence, for their focus is still on the problem. Peace rallies put the energy and focus on the solution. So, we are not going to slam corporate news in our broadcast. No. Shows like that, The Daily Show and Colbert, already have that angle covered. We are going to practice what we preach. We have drawn it to your attention. Enough said. Done. Duly noted. Moving on. 
Now it's time for a viable solution, a counterbalance to the negativity. Einstein once said, you cannot solve a problem from the same level of consciousness that created it. So here's a new level of consciousness. I am proud to present a new kind of news broadcast, PNN, Positive News Network. Twice a month, we will be uploading a new kind of news recording. We will be bringing you news of positive changes happening in the world, innovations, inventions, and stories of success and personal triumph. And my personal favorite segment, when we talk about a major negative event going on in world news and flip it, finding the good and the light amidst the darkness. We will be disseminating information that brightens your day, warms your heart, and proves that anything is possible, as well as inspires you to action. After watching our news broadcast, you will feel better about life, people, and the world you live in. We are here to help shift your focus. We are here to help you realize that the world doesn't need to be made a better place, for it already is. We just haven't been paying the proper attention. We are here not only to report on the present, but to create a brighter future by bringing positive intentions to your attention. And yes, right now we are only a small high school project led by a handful of amazing leaders and innovators, but we are aiming for global or at least national syndication with any news leader that has the courage and the vision to see the possible impact of this project, which is changing the face of news as we know it. It is time for a change and the world is ready and waiting. The question is, are you? If you would like to participate or contribute to our mission and vision, please contact me through our website, positivenews.network. Until the next time, I'm Anastasia Hercules, and this is our entire PNN crew reminding you to focus on the positive and watch your world change.